um, you are evaluating Hollis, and Jordan is evaluating Connie. Oh. Okay. okay. Jordan, did you get that? Mm -hmm. We're on? Yep. Okay. Hi, everybody. Dreams start somewhere. I wanted to tell you today about how my dream has come true and hopefully help others to motivate and inspire and have your dreams come true as well. The year was 1987. Lunch in my eighth, set, sixth grade class was 95 cents. There was a nickel left over, and I got all the nickels because I started the Liebman Times, and I sold it to all the students. My father would Xerox these off at work until he got yelled at by his boss to stop using paper. In here, I wrote about what little kids talk about, baseball cards, picking your nose, and at the time, popular things like Mr. T's fake son. I painted a fool. <laughs> a lifelong passion of publishing, writing began. Then in eighth grade, 1989, we did a book of poetry. I was inspired by heavy metal groups Metallica and Megadeth, which is what young prepubescent boys think of. Now I'd like to read aloud for the first time in about 26 years or so, Egg Roll, a poem I wrote. Egg Roll. I fried the egg roll, I touched the egg roll, I smelled the egg roll, I took the egg roll and picked it up and ate the egg roll. Egg roll, ladies and gentlemen. It's atrocious, but publishing starts somewhere. <laughs> Fast forward to, uh, I believe, the year 1999. I had the honor of working for, um, in the Empire State Building, I got $10 an hour. I was an editor for three fitness magazines, and it was an honor. They were, now defunct, Exercise for Men, Men's Exercise. I suggested a female title, by the way. They wouldn't have it, just so we're very clear. But I'm proud of these magazines. And Natural Bodybuilding and Fitness. Also defunct now, I believe. I also met at one of the shows I would later um, work at. I met an international um, photographer and so forth. And he had Divas Magazine, of which I contributed photography. Defunct now as well. Maybe the commonality is here because I had something to do with all the publishing uh -oh. that they're defunct. I hope not. And Fitness Mania which is cool. So I did contest articles and photography and so forth. I suggested when I worked for Cello Publishing, these magazines, I said, can I, I would do anything to get on a cover. And they said, well, get in shape. And I got in shape. I didn't get the cover, ladies and gentlemen, but they gave me an article, which was really cool. I was very thankful. Right. That was me. Wow. You with hair. I had hair. I had hair. <laughs> I was very, very thankful, but I must tell you, I was very disappointed. I really, really wanted the cover. There's nothing wrong with this gentleman, but I thought I was, I was an in, he looks great, but you know, I was an in-house editor. I really, really wanted a cover. Some things in life we don't have control over, but I'll get to that a little bit later. Then I, through cello publishing, got, and I'm like a carrot top of props today. I got a lot of props, but I like to tell my stories with props. I was given my first press pass from cello publishing, the Arnold Classic, which ironically is next week. Schwarzenegger runs a huge expo and fitness show every year. Mm -hmm. I was honored. I was blown away, overwhelmed to be a part of it. To be able to be there and see my heroes up close and photograph and write a contest report and it would get published blew me away. That led to the big daddy of them all, my first Mr. Olympia press pass. This is the Super Bowl of bodybuilding. I am beyond today even thankful still that I was allowed to be a part of it. Very, very thankful. All things come to an end. I left cello publishing on good terms, but I really desired to be a part of the publishing world, and more importantly, the bodybuilding world, because I was retired. I had won a national title in 19, and I did what I had to do, and I was done. So I was allotted status into the IFBB, the International Federation of Bodybuilders. This is the Mr. Olympia organization. This is the professional division that awarded Schwarzenegger, and Lee Haney, and all the greats of the Mr. Olympia title. I was allowed to be in there simply because I, I begged and I conjoled and I plead and I kept knocking on the door and I wouldn't go away like a, <laughs> a zit that just wouldn't stop bleeding. And they let me in and I'm thankful to this day. But all good things come to an end. And I was left there too on good terms. As I originally stated earlier, I moved to California. Many people come here for acting and so forth. I came to be a screenwriter. I've written at this point eight screenplays. Nothing, nothing ever happened with them. This was the final straw. It started out, I uh, called it the sub. And I thought, we all know the Breakfast Club, which ironically yeah. is 30 years old now. I thought, what happened to the John Bender character, the burnout character, when he became an adult 20 years later? So the first draft of this script was called the sub. It later turned into something called 
Dax Hanna UFC, Ultimate Fighting Custodian, a comedy, a high concept comedy. I wanted, I can't remember his name right now, Skate, Kevin James. Um, this movie got made, and I wrote it before the, the version that got made got made, but I couldn't prove it. And that for me was the final straw, and I said, you know what? I'm not meant to be a screenwriter, and that's okay. And that is when I met a friend who was doing books. You all know I'm an author. And I said, I'm so happy for you, man. You're doing books. And me being me, I said, how can I be a part of it? He said, well, I'll write to them and see what happens. Writing to this company, Mosley Road Inc., who is a packager, they get paid to put together books and sell them to publishers. Led to my first book, uh, Anatomy of Fitness Core, which I was very proud of. I wrote it all by myself. You always have help. I had an editor, a photographer, and so forth. And I got in okay shape. You know, decent enough shape, but not what I would call real shape. That led to book after book. And one thing I've learned, ladies and gentlemen, is never saying I can't do it. They could have said, I want you to write a book about rabbis playing pickup sticks with their butt cheeks on Mars. <laughs> and I would, written, I would have written the book. Because never say never, you can always learn. So this book led to book number two, Exercise for Anatomy 50 Plus. Book number three, on and on. Of course, stability. And I just kept banging them out because I have no life. Uh, strength and conditioning. And on and on and on and on. Uh, book, I think, five and six. I did these over the course of my breakup over one summer. I was really happy for this work, not just for the money, but it got me through a really tough time because I had deadlines to adhere to. Uh, books six and seven, respectively. Um, and then... This is the one I'm second most proud of. This is a cool book. I really am proud of it, The Anatomy of Encyclopedia. This has a lot of cool stuff. I'm really, really proud of it. My first hardcover book. As you can see, it's thick too. But, and as I've said in speeches past, all good things come to an end. I was tired of being a spoke on a wheel. I was tired of being bought out. I don't get paid on any of those books. And I stand behind them and I'm proud of them, but I was bought out. My breakup, and you all know the story of everything, basically led to me doing peak physique where I got in real shape for the first time since that magazine article I showed you from those years ago. This I get a piece of. It's in stores now. I'm very, very thankful. And it's only the beginning, because now I have <coughs> two others I'm working on. So I'm very, very thankful. What I wanted to bring it now full circle is, and I keep going back and forth, I did get that magazine cover, ladies and gentlemen, um, just this month. I don't have a copy of it on me right now, but it's a <coughs> magazine in the UK called PT Magazine. This is out right now. I'm still waiting for my cover, my copy. I'm really, really thankful. Not only that, they've asked me to be a contributing writer. I've already sent them two Ooh, articles. Right. Very, very thankful. Very, very humble. A lot of hard work. Dreams happen. You just have to want it bad enough, and you cannot stop no matter what. I never had control over the cover. It just happened. It happened because they interviewed me for Peak Physique, and they were very pleased with, I guess, the humble, eloquent, person, honest person, that they encountered. And I also wanted to say, because I want to help everybody, how do you go about getting published if you don't know what you're doing? I picked up one of these, The Literary Guide to Agents, which anybody can get in any store, and this book did shit for me. It did nothing for me, because I got, I wrote query letter after query letter, and I got rejection after rejection. For some people, it may work, but they want people they can make money off of. They don't have time to waste with nobodies. So what I'm telling you is you get in any way you can, by any means necessary, whatever you have to do, you get in and do. And I'm wearing this shirt specifically because I'm bloated today, but more importantly than that, John Cena, whether you like wrestling or not, I mean, never give up. You know, never give up, and that's what it's about. So go after your dreams. I don't care what it is. If you want to be a better speaker, you know, if you want to get that sex change operation we talked about earlier, you want to get published, whatever you want to do, you guys can do it if you want it bad enough. Thank you for your time.